you doing? Welcome to Music Industry Cities New Thoughts, where we discuss fresh ideas, take a look at the industry from a different perspective. I'm Peter Schwing, and joining me today is a special guest, Heavenly Reina. If there's something you'd like to chime in about, let us hear your thoughts in the chat or leave a comment below. And stick around to the end of the show. We're going to answer questions uh, from the chat over in Twitch and YouTube. So let's get to it. All right. So uh, 2020 is just the year that keeps on delivering. So uh, first of all, hi, April. I see April just jumped into the chat there. April's going to be streaming on Twitch soon enough. So I think it's going to be really interesting to her. How you doing? Uh, so <laughs> we started a little late. Stephanie Carlin, that's who you usually see as my co-host. She, uh, unfortunately, we had a snowstorm, pretty nasty one here on the East Coast. And uh, she texted me about 20 minutes before. It's like, my power is out and I have no cell service. So uh, that was that. And then we just went live. And then Streamlabs is just telling me like, hey, you know something? Uh, <laughs> we're not going to go live right now. So I was doing all these reconfiguring. I mean, and this is the last official show for Music Industry City of the year. So we have our Monday kickoff, our Tuesday talkies, Wednesday uh, reaction Wednesday on the news. Thursdays is always new thoughts. Tonight we will be doing free form. <coughs> Excuse me. That is the live call in show on here. And we're everywhere, but you know, join us on Twitch and over on YouTube and you get to chat and you get to be on screen. Like, so if you're like hanging out, we like what you're talking about, come and join us on screen. You get to be, uh, you know, chat about what you want. So we were going to talk about, you know, taking a stock of what the crisis of COVID has taught us. <laughs> And, uh, you know, how it's, it's not over yet. And we were going to talk about how to elevate your career and alter your career. So I think we're going to go lead into that second segment there of uh, talking about your career. And we have a really uh, fantastic person today that is going to be joining us. Uh, found our Twitch, amazing Twitch streamer. So much fun. Great person. Uh what we call it's like the new version of a triple threat. It's uh, in more of a new tradition, not the tradition. She's a traditional, falls under a triple threat in a traditional way, but there's this new way of things uh, looking at this. So uh, why don't we just get right to it and hopefully no more technical difficulties. Hi to everybody there that is, uh, you know, bump, uh, blowing up over there on the Twitch stream. Uh, let's get right to it and bring Heavenly onto the stage. <laughs> Heavenly, how are you? Hello, I'm doing good. <laughs> How are you doing? Uh, I'm just, I'm just trying to get through this. So early, even like this week has just been complete. Like we're we're running to the finish line of 2020, and I think we're all just exhausted. Uh, we're just waiting for 2021. But I had a, net, uh, I got an eye infection over the weekend. So on Monday, I'm trying to do the show. I can't open my right eye. I got my key light up here, just beaming into it. So I'm like, uh, trying to read the teleprompter. I couldn't, oh, so no. it, it's just been a, a week, uh, one of those weeks, I guess you could say, or we can just say it's been one of those years. Right. How, how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's been, it, it's been a long year, honestly. It's been, <laughs> it's been quite the year, but you know, I think, honestly, I think I managed to turn it around into something really positive for me. So I'm really pleased. I'm, I'm really excited about what 2021 is going to, mm -hmm. is going to offer. And I hope it's better. You know, yeah. it's, I hope I really do. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we all do. I mean, 2020 has set the bar pretty low. <laughs> so there's only, we can only go up from here, hopefully. Um, you know, so you, you know, you look, I like what you said there is about like, you know, 2021, it, you know, 2020, there's also some good things that came out of it. Like we kind of looked at maybe careers in a different way. So many people got into live streaming. The entire world got into uh, Zoom. So it now has become more natural for people to be having conversations on the computer. Uh, and now it's even more with the musicians getting into Twitch. And I want I want to get into uh, your Twitch streaming and everything first. But you know, just just going back, like you are no stranger to video. I mean, you at the age of five, I believe it was, that uh, had your first YouTube channel. Yeah. I, I, so I, I, uh... I want to hear this. Tell us all about it. I'm gonna I'm gonna put you up on the big screen here. 
Okay, sounds good. I uh, So when I was about five years old, my parents decided to sell everything that we owned, our house, our cars, and, and everything up in Northern California and retire early and buy a camper in Europe and travel around the world on, on a really cheap budget, actually. We did it. We did it for really cheap. We did it for about $23 a day per person. That's what that's the little quote that my mom likes to give. Um, so it's ingrained in me now. And we started a YouTube channel. My mom had a really, really, really popular family travel blog. She was one of the pioneers in family travel blogging and really using social media as a way to connect with people online through that community. And so we started putting up little YouTube videos of me starting from when I was about five, six, seven, eight. And one of our very first YouTube videos went like totally viral of me playing violin in every little country that we would go to. Uh, <laughs> and it blew up. It was called Where in Heaven is Mozart because I used to be called Mozart. And that was kind of really what what got kind of what got everything started was was me kind of I was very natural to the camera and I my family noticed that and it was never really a big thing I I didn't even know that I was going to be going into the entertainment industry until I was about 13 so it was kind of really just training unconscious training so that was <laughs> that was kind of cool it was like you were already prepared to be a natural in front of the camera yeah, pretty yeah. much. I mean, were, were you a big ham? Were, were you one that was really hamming it up? I mean, yeah, I was, I, I, I had quite a knack for, uh, you know, delivering lines and, you know, Merry Christmas from the Soul Travelers. To, you know, I just, <laughs> it was very, it was like a thing, you know? <laughs> so, so this goes into, I mean, you, you're globe trotting now, you're, you're going, to, how, how many countries? 48. 48. And then you, over that time, you also learned three different languages. Yes. Okay. So first, what is your, what would you say if, if outside the United States, if you had to live in one country for the rest of your life, which country would that be? Oh, that's a new one. Mm -hmm. I usually get asked which one's my favorite country. And I can, Spain is, is my favorite country oh, yeah. outside of the U.S. Beautiful. But if I had to pick a country to live in, I would probably also pick Spain. I love Europe. I really wish I lived in Europe. Honestly, just there's so many places in Europe I would love to live for like extended periods of time, mm -hmm. ideally. My, uh, uh, my, I have a client that's in Germany and we do, they produce live events and everything. So we're doing all these virtual events and I'm just waiting to get back into like being able to travel because I'm like, you guys need to bring me over to Germany and I'm just going to hang out there and live there for a little while and then just just kind of, you know, hop around country hop and get really experienced and then go visit some friends in Spain. Yeah, that's that sounds so great. I was supposed to go to Europe. Uh, I was going to go backpacking by myself for the first time this past summer because I have a bunch of friends, not a bunch, but like I have a bunch of friends in Europe who live in different countries and go to school there and, you know, make music there. And so I was going to stay with some of my friends and go backpacking and just kind of do a little extended travel period for myself. And I was so excited for it and it didn't get to happen. And I was really bummed. So I'm it'll it'll happen, though, at some point. Right. So so then, you know, 2020 happened. I mean, I think the date, the big day was March 13th. Uh, was when everything shut down. Uh, we didn't have any idea how long this was going to last. Let me ask: Were you were you streaming at that time? Were you already on Twitch? I know you uh, you were in a film, and we'll talk about that. But you were on. Uh, there's other, were you on the docket for some other acting roles? Like, tell us what happened to you in that you know March, April, May timeline. Well, right about March. So I, I think it was actually, I think it was around March 10th or March. It was, it was like the week of March 10th that the movie that I was in came out, which was terrible timing because I was going to do like a wash party. I was going to do this promo. I was going to do all these things. Um, and, and none of it got to happen because everything shut down and we went into lockdown. And I was also supposed to, I had booked a pilot in January um, and it was supposed to shoot in April, 
And that, of course, got pushed back. They said, okay, we're going to shoot for like August, September. August, September came around. Nothing. Still haven't shot that. We're still holding out that we're going to be able to shoot that pilot. But who knows? So that was another thing that was that was I was really looking forward to is my first pilot and didn't happen. Um, and then I started streaming in I started streaming. I'm pretty sure it was May 1st was my is my Twitch streaming anniversary. And my whole my, my whole intro to Twitch was wild because I started streaming in May and I was growing so slow and I was getting really discouraged. And then I, oh, and I also, I decided not to, um, what, 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 what's the, what's the term, um, apply for affiliate. I was already accepted as affiliate, but, uh, I didn't choose to activate affiliate status until about, uh, I think it was August. Mm -hmm. And then when I finally hit affiliate and I was started, you know, doing all my emotes and my subs and, you know, all that jazz, I got shadow banned. And mm -hmm. it was like, what the heck is going on here? And I was so, I was so upset. I was so discouraged because I've been working, you know, for about, I think it was like four months on Twitch and it was kind of not really going the way I, I wanted it to. And then some of my mods were like, hey, why don't you make a new channel and see if that helps? And so I made a new channel on, I think it was September 1st, I'm pretty sure. And it's been going really good, much better. And so I'm very, very, very grateful for that. Right. So, so there's so many points. And what, you know, what this show is about, because I come from the traditional music industry side and, you know, I was producing events, conferences and working with lots of artists and managing. And, you know, I look at Twitch and what the musicians and the live streamers are doing is that I you know, consider it's kind of like that alternative media for musicians. And I've seen so much great growth where, or people that are, they play music or a musician, but they've already been on Twitch or they're getting into it, as opposed to a lot of these musicians that have, have like, they're still trying to figure out like what they're gonna do about a live show next year, where they ha should, should be using this opportunity to get onto Twitch. Now, in speaking with them, a lot of them are a little, I guess, you know, they feel that barrier to entry or they're a little nervous and they're not sure about Twitch and they hear some good things, but then they feel like this is too much of a challenge or I, I don't have the time to devote. So first of all, yes, you do anything you want to do for succeed to succeed, you have to devote time. So, but you talked about a few things is that slow pickup and and then we're going to just get into that the shadow ban and everything for a moment. But the slow pickup and, you know, how do you go about, how did you go about when you start streaming? Because Twitch doesn't have the greatest algorithms for people, you know, to find musicians. It's really more about you have to kind of bring some people over to build that community. How do you mentally get on and start, you know, I'm just going to play music. I'm going to stream. And there's, and you're looking at the counter and then there's zero viewers and then, you get one and you're like, oh, two. And then it goes back down to zero. Like, how do you keep, like, what's your mentality and like, how do you keep going? Well, for me, when I first started on Twitch, I had a few people already who were watching me from just people that I had cultivated a relationship with and a fan base with um, over the years. And so they, a few of them migrated over to Twitch, but not, not all of them, not a, not a ton of them. So I wasn't starting completely with zero, but it was still, it was, oh my God, I, I had to get completely out of my comfort zone. I, I, <laughs> I, I have like a little bit of like social anxiety in front of live streaming because it's, everything is just, it's, it's live and like everything you're saying and like every single movement you make, everybody's watching it and everybody can see what you're doing. And it's so, it's honestly really nerve wracking. Um, but over time I really got just so comfortable in front of the camera and with everybody and, and just kind of creating a community that you really feel comfortable with and welcoming new people and just kind of establishing a, a quote unquote brand, but not in a, you know, stiff sense, just in a, this is what you're, 
going to get when you come to my channel. This is what this is the experience you're going to have and you're going to have fun because this is what we do here and we make jokes and we troll around and we do a lot of music, but we also interact with each other and we we have fun and we have a good time and everybody really likes each other, I think. And we quack Exactly, and we quack. And, and exactly. This, this is, and so this is like one of one of the things that so many musicians can really learn. And dealing with musicians, they think a lot of them from the traditional side. They think, oh, I have to put on a concert on Twitch. It's like no, you just engage with your audience and you chat. Like for instance, I see a lot of your regulars over here. I see Toby. I see Dino. Okay, Jabron, like, I'm just oh my God, I need to get, I can't see the chat. I should pull up the chat. <laughs> I should pull it up. And, and we just got pull a few up. quacks in there, but I don't have my sound. Okay. So we're going to, let's, let's talk about the quacks. And like, you, you hit the nail on the head on brand. Many people, and if you go to Twitch and you go into just chatting, you see everybody has their own look and, or some people are really overdoing it with the lighting and, you know, everything and the RGB. And it's like, you know, it's great. But you, this is this is your setup. This is, and I see you have some Christmas lights for the season. <laughs> but you have a very simple setup. It's like here I am. I'm just going to talk with you. I'm going to sing, and the way you uh, move in and out of speaking with your, engaging with your audience. And one of the things that I try to explain best to the traditional musicians looking to get into it is, is it's more about being yourself. If you want to practice something, then go practice and just do it live. You don't have to be perfect on Twitch and what you're talking about your brand. And so there are things like, you know, we say quack. So let's explain what the quack is. Uh, what Basically what Heavenly has is you can tip, you know, there's bits and what you can do is you can say, I wanna play a, so a sound on stream. So she's picked numerous sounds and some of them are jump scares and then it, her, the bot t counts how many times she's been, or the mods count how many times she's been jump scared. What brought that on? This is part of your brand. Like I go, that's how I found you. I was like, oh, quack, quack. And you're like, ah. So <laughs> what, brought, brought, what brought this on? And like, what do you feel that, like, was that something you just came up with? Or like, you know, have you tried other things? What worked, what didn't work for you? It was really something I saw this on another streamer's channel. I saw that she had these little sound alerts and I was like, oh, that's so cool. I I tried doing it before with another extension and it didn't work. I couldn't figure out how to do it. I wasn't doing it right. Um, and so I was like, hey, like, why don't I see if like this extension works? And so I, I, I just pulled it up. I, I got some sounds. I like handpicked a bunch of sounds. I set it up in my channel. And it took me a really long time, honestly, because I couldn't figure out, I never hooked up my desktop sound to my stream because I never needed it because I'm just streaming music. And so everything's going through my Logic Pro. And so I never needed to play any desktop sounds. Um, and so it took like four streams to figure out how to get the sounds to play back because in the beginning, the sounds were just playing in my headphones and they could hear them through my headphones and they could see me being scared, but they couldn't hear it. And then they could hear it, but I couldn't hear it. And and it was just like a lot of just trial and error. And then I just Googled it. And I was like, how do I get my desktop sounds on my stream? And then that was all, literally all I had to do. So that's like another thing is when you're when you're starting out streaming on Twitch, everything is online everything is out there any question you have any problem usually like 95 percent of the time you can solve the issue by just going to a youtube video or going to quora or like yahoo answers um or reddit that was where i found my answer oh, yeah so yeah. youtube is the greatest how-to uh video archive ever and so many, and that's the thing is so many musicians, if you just like, how do I do, you just type in how this, and it's good, you just find a YouTube clip and they're gonna, there's, I mean, there's gonna be so many things like, how do I, you know, what frame rates, what's my bit rate, what, you know, all of that, I am from YouTube and I watch everything at 2X speed. 
<laughs> so <laughs> you can go through hours of YouTube videos and you get you actually get used to like 2x speed, like your brain can process it unless they do really speak fast. But overall, it's like you just can you can find anything you want. It's like, how do I stream on Twitch? Well, there's going to be a whole series. You're going to find thousands of videos about that. And then you learn who the key players are. Um, but yeah, so with your brand and, you know, when, you know, let, let's talk about, I, I want to go back just a little bit. Uh, uh, let's go back into the Wayback Machine again, because part of your brand uh, is doing good, you know, for for the world. OK, and I want to go back to tell us about you. You did a TED talk years ago. Yes, I so, did. <laughs> so, so tell tell us about this. Like, how did this all come into play? What and like, how does this fall into the line of your trajectory of your career in acting, performing, singing? Uh, and we're going to talk about like your music and in films as well. But everything that you're doing, like, how did that fall into the trajectory? Well, the TED Talk came about because somebody that. A principal for this school in England, this all-girls school right outside of London, um, was friends with my mom from all those years of traveling in the blog. And they had, you know, established a relationship over Twitter and just online. Um, and he was setting up this TEDx talk at his school outside of London. And he wanted me to speak at it. And I couldn't go because it was in England. and. So he was like, why don't you just tape it and then we will play it at the TEDx event. And I was like, okay, great. That's perfect. And so I did that, did the TED talk, taped it, they played it. And then a couple years later, no, it was the next year because I did the TED talk, TED talk in 2016. And then in 2017, the same guy had me flew me and my mom out to Newcastle in England to be a keynote speaker at this global education conference. And so that was really, really cool because we used the whole opportunity as a tour for me to perform all in these different cities in Europe and really travel again and kind of take a little vacation for a couple weeks also. Um, but it was really, really cool how all these relationships that had been cultivated over the years were kind of turning into something that was beneficial for not only, you know, us as a family, but me as an artist and as a musician. And I think that, and I think that's fantastic. And, you know, the, the you know, living in England. And so how many bits is it for, to speak in a British accent? It's, it's not bits, it's channel points. It's oh, 500, channel points. 500 channel points. I think it, or maybe it's a thousand channel points. I'm not positive. Well, well, let's see uh, if like some of your, your followers that are in the chat, if they remember, but, and, and that's, and so it's all tying this in together into your brand again. So it's something that's like, okay, here's the fun you can have with, I'm here. This is what I'm doing. I'm, it's, you know, the fact is like, okay, you can do these jump scares. And by the way, people don't do the jump scares while she's singing. Wait until she's finished. Yeah, sometimes they okay. do. Okay, that's a little, you know, cursy. And the, the best one is the door knocking, which is like this three dimension. <laughs> yeah. It's like the door knocking sounds like it's behind you. So check out her channel. Um, you know, I put, I'll put it up on the screen again later. So, so then moving forward on that is, you know, then you started on, on the charity front. You've helped build a school in Guatemala. And that was part of this uh, Pencils uh, of Promise. So is it, was this before or after that TED Talk era? That was way before. That was back okay. in, I was about 12 when we did that. That was when I was living in Malaysia and I was going to school there. And I had met Adam Braun off of Twitter who runs Pencils of Promise and who is Scooter Braun's brother. And I just got involved with it because I, you know, was really passionate about it as well. And this was such a long time ago that I, I remember a lot of it, but I don't remember everything <laughs> from like way back when. So this is all coming back from like the little like box out inside my brain. We're, we're I'm <laughs> digging deep here, you know, like, I, really? I can't remember this year. So time is an illusion right now. Really? <laughs> So, so then let, let's say, what are you looking for next? Okay, we, 
We're starting to see vaccines. Uh, where it's still going to be a while. How do you look at where you want to take your career in with going into like the let's say the first half? I mean, we can't we we can only go so far into the eight ball and the crystal ball and predict. Like where where do you see like going into twenty twenty one? What is it you want to accomplish? Where do you think that uh, you know we're going to be or you're going to be? Well, for me, there's a lot of stuff going on kind of like behind the scenes that I don't really talk about. Um, and so I have a bunch of opportunities possibly coming up in, in Asia for the first half of the year. I'm not positive. We don't really know exactly what's going to be going on yet. Um, but everything's kind of looking like it'll be a lot more clear in the next few weeks before Christmas. Um, so everything's kind of up in the air right now, but we have a general idea. When I say we, I mean like me and my management and my family. Um, so I'm really excited about 2021 because it really does look like there's some exciting opportunities going on. And I'm excited to just keep streaming and keep growing the community because Twitch is honestly something that has brought a lot of joy into my life in the pandemic because it kind of gave me a kind of a purpose when everything was going like crazy and it gave me something to do and to focus on and to work on and to cultivate and to kind of just use my brain and figure out how to, you know, how to grow and how to do this and how to do that. And to really just grow a community, which I think we've done, and it's been really awesome. And so I'm, I'm really excited to see kind of how that goes. And I, I know no matter what I'm doing, uh, at least in the next year or so, I'm still going to be streaming on Twitch because I really, really love what what it does and what it's brought. Uh, you yeah, and being uh, as watching you, and I'll, I'll like have you on in the background at times while I'm like doing work or prepping for the shows and you know I'll, I'll look over every now and then and it's like you have a great community you have people that are engaged and when you start seeing the community engage with each other that's really when it's like okay now we have here here's here's the here's my here's the community everybody's engaging with each other and it's so much it to the betterment of people and it can help and it creates something especially during these times when we are lacking physical contact or, you know, being able to meet people. So many times when you go out is when you meet people and friends of friends, and now you're building this online community. So, you know, this it's great. And I, I really, and it's because also like your brand and your personality, it's like you're, it's a warm, welcoming vibe and you have fun with it. And you're, and it's, uh, it's just kind of just, you get into that flow. It's like, it's kind of just really cool and chill. So, um, you know, one other thing then is, what would you say? Oh no, actually, no. Before two things, I want. I want to go back to the film. We got. We got to. We got to plug the film. We got to make sure we get that plug in. <laughs> so, uh, tell us about the film that you are in because it has to do with you as a musician. Right. Yeah. So back we shot. Okay. So where do I start? Let me think. Okay. So I was in a film. I shot a film a year ago called Fame and a Deadly Cost for the Lifetime Movie Network, and it aired. Like I said literally the week that the entire pandemic at least in the united states started and so it was very it was a very underwhelming response at the time <laughs> which was kind of disappointing but in the time since it's been a lot better because they air it every month on the lifetime movie network usually right around the beginning of the month um and so fame and deadly cost is about a girl called blake who is just your everyday average normal teenager in LA and she likes singing and she likes writing songs and she has a boyfriend and she has her friends although they never talk about her friends in the movie which I thought was kind of weird um but so she posts this photo not this photo this video of her singing this original song that was my original song um in the movie and it goes totally viral overnight and suddenly she becomes like insanely popular at school. She has music agents knocking at her door and she decides to work with this one music agent who introduces her to this man called DC, who is a producer and a, a superstar artist in his day, kind of like what I equate to like a Justin Timberlake-esque kind of person. And 
Her mom is like really skeptic about the whole thing. She doesn't know if she wants Blake to, you know, move so fast and to be, you know, in Hollywood and do all these things. She wants her to just live a normal life and go to college and be stable. She's being and a mom. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and and Blake is like, no, I want to be, I want to be somebody. I want to be famous. I want to be a star. And she gets whisked away by this DC to an island in Mexico, which is her first red flag. And it turns out that it's a giant human trafficking scheme with DC at the head and all these producers and famous like film movie people buying these girls. And it turns dark really quick, but they do manage to stay pretty light. It's not it's not as dark of a movie as you would think it is the Lifetime Movie Network. But uh it's it's a really cool movie and it was my first lead in a feature film and I got to sing five of my original songs in it, which was really really amazing. Um and not what I was expecting when I first auditioned, it just kind of happened. Um and so that was a really really amazing opportunity and and I had so much fun filming it. And, and yeah, so it airs every month on the Lifetime Movie Network if you have that on, on your TV. Well, what, so what attracted, I mean, you're doing, are you doing this all on your own, like everything, like with the music or is, is, do you have management, agents, things like that, or like the production that you've been working on? Is this, you know, how is that all, what, you have a team surrounding you in essence. I I wouldn't say I have a like a team surrounding me, but I I do have agents and a manager for acting because you kind of need that if you're in LA. And I um I've been acting for about five years, and so it was like a gradual thing. I didn't have a manager when I first started. I didn't have an agent when I first started. And when I did start, I had an agent, and I was kind of a little fish in a really big pond, and so I didn't really get a lot of attention. And then I moved agencies and I really, really love my agents now. They're amazing people. And my manager is really awesome. And I just recently signed with management for music. So about six months ago. So for the past six years, five or six years, I haven't had a, an, a music manager or anything. And so I, I kind of have been doing everything on my own. Um, but production wise, I have a lot of different producers that I work with and engineers um, and everything is on spec, so mm -hmm. I don't pay for it. It's just kind of like, hey, like if this goes somewhere, it's then we both win. Spec, the fa one of the the favorite terms in the music industry, <laughs> or yeah. and, and Hollywood as well. Uh, let, let me just tie something else together. Uh, when you were thirteen, you wrote a song called "You're Not Alone," and you know it's helped to cause like you know about like for hu ha about human trafficking, and is that something that uh brought you like made you more interested in this film is like it was was that a tie-in somehow so it at the, the two things were really super separate from each other mm -hmm. uh, my my music teacher when i was about 13 told me that i should write a song about human trafficking and i and i really didn't know why he wanted me to but i was like okay you know why not like let me try something and so i wrote you're not alone with my songwriting teacher and it was it was a really really cool song that I'm I'm actually really proud of even though I I wrote it when I was about I wrote it when I was 13 so it was a really long time ago um and it got a lot of attention from some different people and nothing crazy ever happened with it but then when this movie came along it was kind of it was kind of coincidental in the sense that like wow this is the second thing about human trafficking and not even the second thing other things have come up over the years but it kind of kind of serendipitous in a sense so yeah yeah exactly oh uh, yeah and, and uh, again part of your brand it just all you know things start falling in line so uh just a couple less i mean this has been so fantastic we can go on forever but i also know like there you we're going to talk about like your stream schedule so people can go check you out and there i'm sure people are watching this are going to have other questions for you next time you're streaming and also remember then you can get you you can play quack and a bunch of other sounds for bits on there to everybody um let's talk about music in the films and did you write were those songs already recorded or did you write them for the film and you've also had them in other tv shows as well is that like part is um uh, was it was it just you already had the productions and then somebody was shopping them like how did that all come together 
So basically, they I didn't write them for the film. They were just all in my catalog. I had those songs already written. They were just songs that I'd done in the past. And I have a big catalog of all the songs that I've done. And just in passing, kind of, when I was talking to, I think it was the casting director who passed it along to, you know, the producers, I was like, hey, you know what? If you're looking for music, like, I have a bunch of music uh, if you want to use it. And they were like, yeah, like, why not? Let's use it. And so they handpicked a bunch of songs, five, uh, from the big catalog that I sent. And they were like, we want to use these. And so that was really, really cool uh, and totally unexpected. And I was really happy about that. But for, I think, all of those songs, that was the first time they'd been used in, in something. Yeah, and catalog, we talk about, like, a lot has been going on and talk about catalog. And catalog is so important to being able to have like your, your catalog and your music because it can get sync placements, television, film, things like that. And, you know, in advertising, and you see these, the last week, there's, or two weeks, it's been, again, time is an illusion. So it's like, if something was said yesterday, it could have been three weeks ago in my, in my head. Yeah. Um, but like Bob Dylan selling his music as catalog, Stevie Nicks selling a majority of her catalog. Dylan's was going to for 300 to 400 million. Stevie Nicks was 100 million, but she didn't sell it all. Uh, David Crosby was selling his catalog. These, these, you know, it's kind of almost like the real estate of the music business. You have hypnosis, downtown music publishing, all going for billion dollars worth of catalogs. And it's such an important thing to have, understand publishing. A lot of musicians think of just the streaming and Spotify or a record label. And there's so much more to, up this the music industry because the music industry really is kind of like a misnomer it's a series it's a bunch of industries put together to create the greater music business so the publishing industry is something that's for songwriters to really look into because you you put out the catalog and you're like hey if you want to use it just go license it and i'll just collect my paycheck Right, right. It's it's it's, it's, a, it's a nice way to ma have music, your music, making money for you, uh, as right. opposed to trying to be on stage or like you know, and that's a challenge right now. Um, where uh, I'm going to put in the show notes on uh, the playbacks all your links and everything. Tell us uh, just before you go one piece of advice or a couple of pieces of advice that you have for musicians that are looking to uh, get into streaming. I would say just do it, learn about it, really, but really make sure that you're willing to put in the work and the time to learn about the platform that you're using. Because a lot of people do it and they don't really realize what all goes into it and what you need to do and what equipment you need to have. And they get really overwhelmed. I got really overwhelmed. I had like three nervous breakdowns, like trying to figure out to it, but I eventually did it. And my, my main piece of advice is just do it and really get comfortable doing it because it takes a while and it's not a while, but it takes, it takes a second, but it's all worth it because you will get comfortable, but you have to be uncomfortable before you can get comfortable. And when you keep doing it, you just start learning like the little extra thing, like your know, chat bots. Okay. All right. Well, don't worry about having a complete set of chat bots and commands. You know, get streaming first and then add your first chatbot. And once you do that, you realize, oh, I can just start adding chatbots or commands and other plugins and extensions. Just take your time and just focus on getting used to being in front of live stream. Like you said, you, the social anxiety of when I started live streaming, it was me actually just setting things up. Like here, I'm testing this out. I'm trying this stream and I would just talk. So it was kind of like my inner, you know, my inner monologue was I was just saying what was on my mind and people would pop in the chat, like, you know, the one viewer and they were like, oh, hey, by the way, no, if you're doing that, if you're if you're looking to do a chat bot, use this or they give you, a and you never know what's gonna happen. So you never know who's going to pop in and that's why you keep talking, you engage. Uh, dead air is never, is, is the worst thing you can have that can happen on television and radio, even more so when you're live streaming. Right. All right. All right. So uh, let's let's do the promo rollout. Where can uh, when are you streaming? Take it away. I'm putting you up on the big screen. Promote whatever you want. <laughs> All right. So I stream 
five times a week now, but I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it five times a week. I might just stick to four. But my main times for streaming are Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays at 12 p.m. PST because I'm in LA on the West Coast. And I've also added a couple night streams Saturday and alternating Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, at 7 p.m. PST for all my U.S. people and my Fridays, Sundays, and Wednesdays are for mainly EU people and people not in the U.S. on U.S. time zones. So, yeah. Right on. Heavenly, it was so awesome uh, chatting with you and learning so much more. This, this has been a blast. And now I can't wait to, like, get into your stream and, like, you know, get back to you know, jump scare. Get back to quacking. Sounds. Quack. Yeah, the, the quack, the unofficial quack king. Quacker. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, everybody, we are going to uh, just uh, wrap up for today. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, when After I roll the credits, we're just going to come back because what you get to do, you get to see behind the scenes. I'm going to bring Heavenly back up. I'm going to be like, hey, that was really cool. Did we miss anything? And if you have some questions, uh, you know, we'll just, we just kind of go free form for a little bit. So you get a little behind the scenes. But uh, also, I just want to get a chance to remind that tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, we do free form, which is we talk about the music business. We pull up some articles in the news. People in the chat can say, hey, what about this? And we'll actually bring people on screen. We'll bring It's like the rate, old school radio call-in show, except we're doing this with video. So it's a lot of fun. You never know who's going to show up. You can also find us at musicindustrycity.com on your, or on your preferred podcast player. I'd like to thank once again uh, Heavenly Reina for joining us. And that's going to be it for now. Have a great day. Stick around for the after show. Peace.